keep primitives to be primitive. Don't uh, let complex logic into the primitive. Don't make them too complex. Because it will become your own pain. Nobody will be able to follow you. Nobody will be able to, to read the code you produced. And then, as a result, nobody will use your code. That's as simple as that. For example, there is a well-known uh, Genie plugin. Its name, its name uh, speaks for itself. So only genius could uh, actually read the code and understand what, what it does. So here's a, a source code. If you, if you browse in your image the Genie plugin, there is a single, only one primitive, and you can, you can check its source code. So here's the start of the source code. Here it's continuous. And it was only initialization and argument checking. So don't, don't, don't make such primitives. <laughs> so what, when, and why? For heavy byte crunching, when you need to do some heavy processing of, uh, you know, like bleating or uh, like copying the memory with some specific uh, or some tight loops, it it uh, with uh, with JIT it's less and less relevant. So it's always better to have this at uh, language side because it's simple because we have the collection hierarchy with nice. Uh, uh, methods like do and collect, select and etc. To improve virtual machine, this of course is a is a good option unless you don't violate, uh, but only if you don't violate uh, rule number one. So you to to improve virtual machine is feasible option to implement new primitives, but don't violate the rule number one. And of course, for uh, communicating with third-party libraries, for uh, creating a bindings to some uh, external libraries to uh, expose them in at language site. This, of course, is a pl plausible option for implementing the plugin or primitives. <coughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and always uh, consider the al alternatives that you can use FFI. And it, it it will be it it gets more better and better in 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 the CogVM, and I think Elliot will speak about that. So, the the uh, action, our vision is to make virtual machine less and less complex. Don't don't uh, don't put a additional complexity because virtual machine is already complex enough. So if you think that uh, you can implement uh, the same functionality using purely just language or just using FFI, consider this option. Because you could win, uh, of course you could win like 10 uh, faster uh, performance, but in the end, it means that if you put something very complex and then you leave and then people who had to maintain the virtual machine code, they have to understand and improve or change their code. They, they have additional things to do comparing to, <laughs> to, to dealing only at, at language side. <coughs> yes, if you have any questions be before next sec section, about primitives. Good. No questions. And plugin is the last section which I'll explain. Plugin is can be seen as a module which exp extends the virtual machine. Plugins can be made internal or external. This means that uh, internal plugins are included in, into virtual machine binary. So you, when you build the virtual machine, it is uh, produced a single big executable and your plugin already in that 
executable and it shipped with a with a virtual machine or you can build the plugin external as external one then you can <coughs> you can uh, provide it as a as, as an extra uh, dynamic library and you can uh, tell users that to use my plugin you can download it from from this source and to and the uh, virtual machine uh, help uh, have the functionality to to dynamically link with your plugin plugins are implemented as subclasses or either or either interpreter plugin or smart smart syntax interpreter plugin the difference is that uh, the smart syntax interpreter plugin uh, use some advanced clever techniques and some uh, different slang code than than uh, basic interpreter plugin so it's it's a bit uh, easier to to create uh, to code the uh, plugin but each option having own bright sides and downsides but i don't 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 want to go into detail about that <laughs> so some important details at, at uh, uh, your plugin class at class side you you can find the module name this is a special method which denotes the name of your plugin as a module so if you don't override this method is just uh, uh, your plugin module name will be same as the class name of plugin and if you override then uh, uh, vm maker will use this name as a module name for your plugin so you see for for code generation it uses the module name to to place the generated code in the subdirectory and uh, for inst for example if you look at inflate plugin the uh, primitive inflate the compressed block and how it's used in the language it uses zip plugin however the original plugin name class name is inflate plugin but uh, at language side it used as zip plugin this is because inflate plugin overrides the module name and uh, answers the zip plugin as a name of plugin it uh, but i do i don't like this scheme but it's uh, sometimes is necessary <coughs> because uh, there is a subclass in in plugins uh, why why i don't like because it's it's hard to track the original plugin by its name so you if you browse the zip plugin you cannot find its implementation you have you have to know that zip plugin is actually implemented by in the inflate plugin class <coughs> yes and there is some difference uh, in uh, plugin in uh, plugin code how you access in the uh, virtual machine uh, methods so typically if you implement in the primitive uh, for interpreter <coughs> you just use in self sense so like self stack value self pop then push self integer object of and uh, so on but if you implement in same if you want to implement same primitive in in plugin it you have to replace all self sense with interpreter proxy and uh, you, you also limited to use only those methods which are uh, listed in interpreter proxy class you you, you cannot use everything which are uh, accessible in uh, interpreter class itself yes so once i if i do exactly that and i could and i crash everywhere and i want i wonder if it's not possible if it's possible or not i mean i develop something that i develop it in interpreter and then I wanted to call it uh, from a, a primitive of a plugin. Is there a way to do that? To that primitive of a plugin call a method or a, a primitive that you define in interpreter that was not already there? Because I yes, for so imagine uh, let's uh, let's consider the situation when you when your uh, plugin is external one. 
So this is the extreme. So it's dynamically linked with with the virtual machine model. So what you can do, you can uh, uh, invoke the EO load function. There is a special uh, function in in interpreter proxy which actually looks up the uh, symbol by its name and module name. For virtual machine, the module name is empty string. So it's like default module, which you have all out of the box. And uh, if you want to make it work, you in, in virtual machine, you have to export this function to use okay, export program. Yes. So then, uh, then this method will be exported <coughs> in virtual machine. And then it, 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 during lookup, it can find it by, by its name. <coughs> So this is a summary table when you implementing primitives in interpreter versus plugin. So for every message sent, as I told before, you, you in, in, in in interpreter you usually do self sends. In plugin, you you should always uh, delegate to interpreter proxy. Uh, so. In, uh, in interpreter, of course, you can access uh, all global state with declared for interpreter, like its instance variable names and so on. And in plugin, you, you cannot access this state directly. You can only use uh, the uh, IP which provided by interpreter proxy. But of course, you can use the state declared for, for your plugin. So if you uh, put the instance variables which is local to your plugin, you can always use them in your code. <coughs> and of course, can, uh, can you use uh, any method implemented for interpreter or object memory in your plugin? No. You, uh, you, you, you limit it only to the subset which provided uh, to interpreter books. There is also an option for some platforms, and there are some some uh, tricky hacks by some plugin, which use uh, uh, um, operating system provided uh, symbol lookup like uh, DL uh, sim sim on on uh, on Linux. So it it dynamically lookups the uh, function by its name in in virtual machine module, and in that way it can it can uh, access this functionality. But it's only for for methods which declared as IP. So we're ready to make our plugin. And we done this so we, we can skip this scary slide. <laughs> and this okay so just open your browser in the image we, we used for uh, uh, generating the uh, VM. VM, yes, and uh, create a new class. Oh. Okay, I will let it like that so you can copy paste <laughs> if someone can copy from <laughs> the wall Done? This is easy? Yes? <laughs> okay, now uh, at, uh, at instance site, implement this method.
Just raise your hand once you're done. Ah uh, yes, this is not I. This one, just be be careful. <coughs> On pop ar uh, pop keyword argument is the one. It's not I. So we're ready to go. If you have demo image, there's a, I think there's already this class, yes? yes? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Let's proceed. Now, uh, adding our plugin to the build. So, type this in workspace. You uh, take the one of the configuration you used for building VM. Put it uh, instead of stack interpreter macOS config, <coughs> and then uh, what uh, what this code does is just uh, customizing the uh, default uh, uh, configuration by adding the extra plugin, which is our our plugin named the universal answer and then we doing the same uh, generating the sources and generating the build configuration yes no it depends on configuration you can check uh, the con you can uh, send to the configuration you can send the internal plugins or external plugins and you will get the list of plugins which is uh, for this configuration which built are internally or externally yeah. and uh, th that uh, you, you decided that at the time of building the CMA because you know that that plugin is better to be built yes yes time. yes there is a default uh, for every platform. There is a default uh, list of external and internal internal plugins. And of course, if you want to custom customize, you can either exclude or include uh, plugins, and it's done like that. Included? Uh, no, relies uh, on uh, the, the interpreter uh, functionality. Still, the difference between internal and external plugin is that uh, 
Well, you you will discover this at, at compile time. <laughs> you will get a lot of errors if you don't. Uh, so if it's, it's not it's too late because we generate the code and then uh, yeah. And Usually the, the code generator is uh, is is uh, <coughs> dump. It's just it's just uh, translating your code into it. Not it's not uh, doing any dependency check. We have the compiler for this. <laughs> so once you don't type in, just evaluate this. Yes. Yes, I fixed that, but I forgot to to push <laughs> to push to. <laughs> so use uh, the wait. Yes. It missing this uh, this method and uh, so you can uh, put this uh, into cog unix config. <laughs> oh wait, it's a stack interpreter macOS config. Yes. Generate for stack. Wait. Mm. Uh, generate? So this is a missing method. Yeah. Oops. Wait. This. So put it into C platform config at instance site. Whatever. <laughs> I can modify the slide so it will work. I added this convenience method just yesterday and forgot to push it <laughs> to public repository. But the main idea is that you don't don't for for usual setup you just doing one one do it one short do you taking the config and issuing one command and you done. <coughs> so what it does? Yes. So you see that. I creating the instance of 
configuration and then I, I retrieve in the default uh, internal plugin list and just add in uh, our new plugin to this list. And then I just uh, tell him to generate the sources and then uh, generate the uh, build uh, make files for build. So this, this ensures that uh, the new plugin are included into CMake files. And if, if you, uh, you, you cannot skip also ge generate source files because uh, it also generates a source code for our new plugin. Otherwise, if you, are, if you didn't change anything and uh, generated sources before, you can just skip and generate only config if you need to, to, to build the VM with different uh, uh, set of plugins. Yes, just go to the build directory and uh, do cmake cmake dot and then check, you can check that your plugin are included mm -hmm. so you can invoke uh, grab the universal fa uh, answer cmake list dot txt so let's check <coughs> So as you can see, uh, my configuration already includes this uh, plugin. So I just do cmake dot and then make. <coughs> and it's done. So as you can see, it's, it's just rebuilt the necessary parts, which is uh, our new plugin, which you Add it. So you see, here it compiles the new plugin, and then just links <coughs> is with uh, uh, with the rest of files, and so you can run the new VM. Hello. Oh, come on. Something wrong? Yes? It says it don't work for me. <laughs> ah, I think I, I made a mistake and I didn't regenerate the sources properly. So I will do that.
uh, use uh, uh, a plugin. You have uh, already built view. Okay. <coughs> so implement this method in some. Uh, it's not not relevant where where you implement that. Just cre create the class from scratch and implement this method. You can put it anywhere. Huh? To put it in the last place or into Of course, put it into the class or into some class. It works for you? <laughs> Good. We have one 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 happy user, <laughs> one happy hack VM hacker. <laughs> Works? Okay. Works for you too? Yeah? So what is the result? <laughs> 42? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Yes, it could fail. <laughs> so let me try. Oh, 42. It works for me too. <laughs> You see, I'm not cheating. There is no, no return 42. <laughs> so, who who made it? Yes. Cold. The cold was asked the question again. Ah, okay. So raise your hand who was able to get the answer of universe. Well, very good. <laughs> yes? <laughs> additional? <laughs> you should not have additional questions. That's the ultimate answer. Come on. <laughs> <coughs> yes, ask. Uh, ah, it was just you. What was the question? Yes. <coughs> so this concludes 
my talk. So questions? Yes. 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 And the plugs for linking and include files. For for external library. Yes, because now with uh, the plugin and the Slant that you showed us, we can uh, call uh, sheet uh, code that we wrote uh, we have written ourselves. If we want to include the next ah, together. Ah, yes, you have. Uh, so the question is that. Suppose that you read uh, written a plugin which uh, uh, which using some uh, external library, yes, mm -hmm. which uh, which are uh, dynamically linked with yours, yep. uh, with your plugin. So in that case, you should uh, modify the configuration for your plugin and specify the uh, explicitly specify that you uh, for building your plugin you have to link with with that library. And uh, you have uh, specified its name and uh, location and etc. etc. You can find the examples for external <coughs> linkage in uh, various uh, methods. I can show you. So in C platform config class, there is a uh, category which named plugin extra rules and here you can find the default extra rules per each plugin usually if if your plugin is simple and only implemented in in slang it don't requires any extra rules because it just translates your your code into the source and then just simply builds it but if you using some third party library you have to provide some additional information. <coughs> so let's find. So this, for instance, a float mass plugin, which contains a lot of uh, extra uh, C files, which uh, residing in the in the cross-platform source directory so it just uh, adds uh, this uh, source files uh, as dependency to for building this plugin and there's some flags which uh, we extracted the, the knowledge that we we need to to compile this uh, plugin without optimization so, so it, it uses the o minus o0 flag when building this plugin and then also include uh, as a result of discussion on, on the VM dev mailing list we also include the definition mi minus d little endian so this is a knowledge which you collect when you <laughs> when you will be more advanced <laughs> in building things Yes, you just do message send, and then uh, it just translates uh, translates your code to function call, and the, and the rest is the job of C compiler and C linker. Mm -hmm. and the, the, the speed the difference between uh, doing this as a plugin the external uh, library and that as a file. With FFI, you you not compile. So. Uh, I'm 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 not sure I understand the question. What is the penalty uh, you you pay if you are not uh, linking uh, your external library as a plugin with a slang, but are uh, doing it in FFI? So uh, comparing to to ex external linking. So suppose that you plugin uh, externally links with some uh, library. And comparing to using same external library using FFI, yes. So uh, in your plugin, you can uh, uh, you can do uh, argument or uh, uh, 
to, to argument to functions you use, you can do more proper or faster uh, conversion comparing to FFI because FFI does not uh, really knows what kind of uh, types you will be used and it it tries to be as much as general as possible so for instance if your function expects uh, an integer as argument type so you might pass true false or nil, or nil and it will uh, uh, it, it checks that okay you pass nil then it's zero in C or if you pass true then it's one in C or you pass false and there is a number of checks which you might skip in your plugin code because you can uh, just okay I, I uh, expecting on, only small integer values so you, you can bypass uh, those checks which uh, and, and therefore you can go faster than FFI and of course uh, with FFI you cannot uh, uh, make calls by skipping some arguments for instance if you have the default if you have the function with two arguments and the one argument is constant like zero but you always have to pass it and FFI does not know that you always use constant so it, it overhead that it always convert you small integer always doing the checking and in plugin you can just put zero so compiler will, will compile this as zero and push push it on stack without any uh, extra checking so that's uh, the main overhead uh, to by using ffi versus uh, plugin but in native boost you can avoid that overhead <laughs> yes. Yes. Is it, uh, do people do that? Um, does it have advantages? Is it overly complex? Well, it's uh, for uh, for uh, for geeks who prefer uh, working with C than than uh, with Smalltalk. They can they can implement everything in C. But uh, then uh, yes, you can you can actually. Uh, include the arbitrary C code into your uh, into your uh, small uh, into generated code and then there is a couple of plugins who use that they just include the C code manually written with, uh, instead of uh, pro instead of implementing the using slang you can find an examples if you if you browse the the source tree in the, in the virtual machine you can find but i don't remember exactly which which plugins use that but some of them are just uh, uh, forwarding everything to uh, appropriate c, c functions which are uh, implemented man manually but for uh, for for things like simulation and for uh, for code management and source management it's, it's more appropriate to, to implement pl uh, plugins in, in Slang maybe at some at some day we, we can uh, retarget the code generation to some different backend so we could use uh, uh, direct uh, native code generation for, for everything in VM Maker instead of generating C sources and this, uh, this then, then this will play a key role because every every you if you can translate all the sources of virt, uh, of virtual machine to directly to native code or to some other language because C is not it's not silver bullet yes can you explain the primitive code you wrote there ah. um, the universal answer? Yeah. Okay. So, for example, why can't we write a return 42 here? 
so return here you see that uh, primitive operating with stack so imagine that that stack are separate from st from c stack and it's a, it's a stack of, of the small talk uh, uh, method activation which is the concept context so what it does is just uh, uh, converts 42 with which is a c uh, integer value to to appropriate uh, small talk object which is a uh, tagged small integer you can check the integer object of implementation to see how it does and then uh, pop then push is just uh, uh, replace the top of the stack with the value which you provided so for for, for the primitive you use it in the method which takes no arguments so when you send this message to uh, when you send this message the primitive is invoked and it uh, answers it removes the receiver which pushed on stack and places 42 as a, as a uh, value which answered you can check the source code of this I can show you where it's located <coughs> so the source code is located in, in uh, src subdirectory and its uh, layout is quite simple here you have the <coughs> source code for virtual machine one of the huge and bloated c a big you see one one point one megabyte for uh, VM make uh, for a core interpreter file, and here you have the subdirectory for generated code for each plugin. So let's see the universal answer here, and here the C code. So you can zoom in if you don't see me. So here our primitive, which is uh, translated with some inlining. So here the value we 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 passed. Uh, we've written in our code and here's the conversion to small integer object and this is a function which pops one value from stack and then pushing <laughs> another value so it is fine for you good You can always check the source code. I mean, if you have any doubts how the code generated, you just you just type the method which you think that it w it could work for you, and then you check the uh, the, uh, the generated source code. <coughs> of course, it it takes time, but without doing this, you cannot achieve anything. So it's a trial and <laughs> and error process because there is very uh, there is too much uh, details about code generation because yeah it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not clear sometimes for for how to translate the uh, small talk uh, some of the small talk syntax directly to c because the languages is different and their semantics also different so yes. Um, based on, on uh, the uh, comments that you've made about SFI in terms of uh, threads and uh, callbacks. Yes. Uh, plugins, uh, plugins is uh, the only 
extension mechanism that can support the uh, thread right now? Um, because I suppose that if you have well, a let's thread, wait while what Elliot have to have to <laughs> to tell us about that. You can you can ask this question to Elliot because uh, we waiting for uh, for better and newer uh, FFI implementation. But now the theoretically, if I have a plugin that uh, uh, forms uh, some thread, it doesn't stop the, the VM. That, that is yes, if you so you if you implement some kind of uh, message passing. Uh, which passing the call to to another thread and just returns from from the plugin you can uh, you can use that for for implementing the plugin without stopping vm for instance uh, sockets sockets plugin uh, runs uh, uh, socket processing in separate thread and what it do is uh, uh, in uh, virtual machine thread, it's just uh, ch uh, checking if there are some some state changes, and uh, uh, so it makes sure that there is no non blocking call, uh, no blocking call. It blocks only the process which made the call. It uses semaphores for for checking that okay, I'm ready to read or I'm ready to write, and if it's not ready, it just blocks the the single process which using socket but not not the whole vm so if you if you if you wonder how to implement the non blocking uh, primitive with calls you can check the uh, uh, async file plugin or or socket plugin more questions <coughs> 